Mr. Harris here and welcome back to another video of Unit 9. In this video, we're going to talk about giant covalent structures. So in the pre previous video, I mentioned about how covalent compounds could have two different types of structures. So one type was simple molecular structure, which we have already talked about. And this video, I'm going to talk about the second type, which is giant covalent structure. So let me go ahead and write that down. Giant covalent structure exists in covalent compounds. And because we're talking about covalent compounds, they have covalent bonds. So some examples are silicon and carbon. They're both elements. And two forms of carbon, they have this structure, diamond and graphite. So diamond and graphite are basically different forms of carbon and we give them a special name. We call them allotropes. Allotropes are two forms of the same element. Okay, they're two different forms of the same element. In this case, we're talking about carbon in which the atoms or molecules are arranged in different ways. So in the coming few slides, I'll show you how carbon, sorry, how graphite and diamond, how they are arranged, and you'll notice the difference. So some other examples are silicon dioxide, which also has a giant covalent, giant covalent structure. So let's look at diamond first. So look at the picture. You notice that the carbon atoms, they are, they are arranged tetrahedrally. Also, if you notice, I'm going to color one carbon atom over here. So each carbon atom is bonded to four other carbon atoms. Okay. And there is a presence for each bond. It shows us a strong covalent bond. So in other words, giant covalent structures, they have strong covalent bonds. Okay. Another thing that I want to mention is, do you guys recall the electron configuration of carbon? Carbon has an electron co configuration of 2, 4. So it has four outermost shell electrons. And all four of them are being bonded over here. So 1, 2, 3, 4. Okay. So keep this in mind and let's move on. Let's look at the structure and arrangement of graphite. So look at the picture you'll see that the atoms are arranged in flat layers. So this is one layer, this is the second layer, and this is the third layer, and so on and so forth. So we call graphite, we call it having, graphite has a layered structure. Okay. You'll also see that these are all strong covalent bonds. And something very interesting about graphite is that it has a presence of weak Van der Waals forces between the layers of carbon atoms. So these dotted ones they're all weak Van der Waals forces. So graphite, it has strong covalent bonds and it also has a weak Van der Waals force between the layers. Okay, but within 
Within the carbon atoms, there are strong covalent bonds. Okay, now let's come back to the word allotrope. Look at the arrangement of graphite over here. It has a layered structure. And let's look at diamond over here. Is, does it have a layer structure? No, it's arranged tetrahedrally. So that is why there are allotropes. Okay. Another thing about graphite is they're arranged in hexagons. So I'm going to talk about that right now. So let me take this carbon atom over here. I'm going to color it blue. So for graphite, each carbon atom is bonded to three other carbon atoms. How about diamond? Do you recall how many carbon atoms were bonded? Yes, all four carbon atoms were bonded. However, for graphite, only three are bonded. And if you remember the Electron configuration, let me go ahead and write that down again. It's 2, 4. So where did the other automotion shell electron go? So where is the other automotion shell electron? There should be one more, right? Because only three are bonded over here. Actually, the other outermost shell electron is moving freely between the layers. It's moving up and down, basically. So the unbonded outermost shell electron is present. However, it is delocalized along the layers. So we call it the delocalized electron. So you guys should be familiar with this word by now. So it's a delocalized electron. Okay, keep this in mind. We'll come back to that later on. But let's look at another example, silicon dioxide. Silicon dioxide has another common name. We call it quartz. It's a famous brand as well, quartz. So it contains mainly silicon dioxide. The chemical formula of silicon dioxide is SiO2. And if you look at the arrangement over here in the diagram, you notice that it has all strong covalent bonds. So S dot C dot B, that's the short form I've introduced. Okay, just wanted to raise this point for this example. So let's look at the properties of giant covalent substances. So again, we'll talk about the four properties physical state, melting point, solubility, and finally, electrical conductivity. Generally speaking, giant covalent substances, they're very hard. Of course, we have an exception, which is graphite. They have a very high melting point. They're insoluble in water, and they're non-conductors, again, with an exception, which is graphite. So graphite, our friend over here, is an exception. So we will definitely need to talk more about it later on. Just to summarize very quickly, giant covalent substances, they're very hard, except graphite. They have high melting points. They're insoluble in both water and non-equous solvents. And they do not conduct electricity with the exception of graphite. Graphite can it conduct electricity because it has delocalized electrons. So let's talk about the physical state first. Why are giant covalent substances hard? So if you've guessed it, because they have strong covalent bonds, okay? So because they have strong covalent bonds, actually we can use them as abrasives. So abrasive is basically something that you can use to polish something. And just a fun fact, 
diamond is actually known to be the hardest substance. So we use diamond to cut and even grind hard materials such as glass and stone. So it's, of course, people use diamond for, um, especially ladies, they wear diamond. But however, diamond is also useful in the industry. We can use it to cut and grind things. Melting point, because giant covalent structures, they have very strong covalent bonds, a lot of energy and heat is required to overcome them. So very similar reasoning to, to that of giant ionic structures. Remember we talked about how giant ionic structure, they have high melting and boiling point because a lot of energy heat is needed to require to overcome these strong ionic bonds. It's the same reason for this. For solubility, giant covalent substances, they're neither soluble in aqueous or non-aqueous so solvents. For electrical conductivity, again, because with the exception of graphite, the rest of them, they do not have the localized electrons or mobile ions, they're unable to conduct electricity. However, there is an exception, again, graphite. Now, there's some applications of graphite. Graphite, because it has van der Waals forces between the layers and delocalized electrons. So graphite can be used as lubricant. So I've noticed some people, they use it for locks or even in the construction industry. They use it as a lubricant. And of course, the pencil that we use in class or in your art room that also contains graphite. And the reason behind is due to that, that layered structure that we're talking about. So it has layers of carbon atoms basically being flaked off when you write. And finally, due to the presence of delocalized electrons, graphite is an ideal, we can use it for basically conducting electricity. So in electric motors or in dry cells, We'll talk about dry cells in the coming few months or maybe next year, we'll see. But um, that's basically a quick short video that I wanted to talk about.